Hey, so I wanted to make a video trying to explain what I think the relationship is between self-concept, self-love, and the ability to manifest things. Um, this is like a topic that is seems to be subject of a lot of debate in the manifestation community. And this all seems pretty clear to me from my own experience. Um, so the answer to do you need to love yourself in order to manifest something specific um, is no. You do not need to love yourself in order to uh, say manifest a million dollars or a relationship with somebody. All you have to be able to do is to believe that the thing you want uh, is possible and will happen. Um, if you can do that without any doubt, it will happen regardless of how you feel about yourself. However, I think the vast majority of people are going to find it very difficult to believe in certain things happening if their self-concept is still screwed up and if they don't love them. I don't know. I've made videos on this channel about how much I hate the phrase love yourself. I just, I just hate it. I prefer to talk about self-concept. Um, I think that if your self-concept is screwed up in the area in which you are trying to manifest something, it's going to be very difficult for you to believe that the thing you want to happen is going to happen. If you see yourself as an unworthy romantic partner, you're going to have a very hard time believing that the perfect romantic partner for you is about to show up and that, you know, that person will view you in a way that you don't even view yourself. I think that's just it in a nutshell. If, for example, I had a very screwed up self-concept um, in certain ways with relation to a romantic partner, that was my biggest thing. I, I had ideas about myself relating to a romantic partner that were causing me to have, you know, relationships that were reflective of my own view of myself in that way. So I viewed myself as being uh, worthy of being committed to, but not worthy of being worshipped like a goddess or treated like, um, you know, a, a desirable physical partner because of how I felt about myself physically. Um, so was I able to just manifest a partner that despite the fact that I couldn't believe that I was worthy in that way uh, would show up and reflect that? No. I mean, I had serious problems with that until I started working on that this year. That was probably my focus this entire year. And out of the blue comes this person in June who uh, makes me feel like I'm a goddess. Okay, so... That wasn't able to happen. I wasn't able to manifest that without changing my self-concept. But while I held this co bad concept of myself as a partner, as a romantic partner, a desirable physical romantic partner, which colored in my existence every day because the right romantic partner was what I really wanted above all else. So it was on my mind all the time. So I had this low self-concept and this sort of shitty feeling existence. Like this thing was a monkey on my back every day. I didn't have a screwed up self-concept in the area of money and my worthiness as a custodian of money or my worthiness uh, as somebody who could create a lot of wealth. That was always great. And so I didn't have almost any problems in that area. So simultaneously, I had sort of an overall shitty view of myself due to the importance I placed on this one area and the fact that my self-concept was screwed up you know, but in these other areas where it wasn't, I had no problems making things happen, you know, quickly. Anything that I could believe would happen did. So, <clears throat> so you don't have to overall love yourself in order to make anything happen. But believing, even repeating affirmations or, you know, doing state akin to sleep or, or whatever you know, subconscious mind reprogramming techniques you find out there. Um, I think those have limited success. And I think that we have a lot of evidence of that because the affirmation thing has been, you know, around since, I don't know, 
since I was conscious in the 80s, you know, this was being made fun of on Saturday Night Live, like the affirmations thing. I, I've never, you know, known that to be a really effective way of reprogramming something that is like deeply wrong with you. If you're, if you really have a deep issue with something, I don't think just repeating something over and over again fixes it. I think you have to go a little deeper and do a little more and, and start to sort of unpack the issue and then start reprogramming all the aspects of it. I, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. So I don't want to make a sweeping statement about that. Um, but the point of this video is not to talk, to talk about how to fix the things you have issues with. It's just to make the point that no, you don't need to love yourself. No, you don't need to have the ultimate high self-concept in order to manifest big things. Um, but I think that in the area, uh, you know, if you have a major problem in a big area, you're going to be continually seeing problems in that area until you begin to uh, pick apart the problem with your self-concept, with the way you view yourself or that that um, topic. Uh, you know, if you have all kinds of negative ideas about money, I think you're going to have a very hard time manifesting money. I mean, if you if you believe that money will come to you, if you, you know, wholeheartedly believe that you will be wealthy on sort of a creation level and it's just done and you know it, but you still harbor all these beliefs, uh, there's going to be a conflict there that's going to prevent it from coming to you. And this isn't some woo-woo spiritual thing. You know, if you think that money is the root of all evil and, you know, you're, you're trying to create a bunch of money in your life, there's going to be a part of you that outwardly, actively, overtly resists things about money coming to you because you don't want to be involved with the root of all evil. This is really simple stuff. You know, um, I'm sure there are exceptions to that rule, but, you know, there are exceptions to every rule. And I think we just need to go based on what seems logical and obvious. Same thing with, like, a romantic partner. Like, I can't get over how much stuff had to change this year. You know, I made the intention, my ultimate romantic fulfillment is a done deal. I trust that it will be. I know that divine intelligence has delivered up to me every other big thing I've intended for. Therefore, I know it will do that with this too. But it didn't happen the next day. There was a long series of events, day-to-day -day interactions with people that I had to have this whole year. And it wasn't until I had a moment on uh, June 21st of this year where I thought, wow, I still really believe, like deep down, I really think the truth is that there are no good people left out there. I'm 40, um, everybody is gonna have too much baggage. Everyone who's single like really has issues. I realized that I really believed that like deep down and it was proved by looking at dating sites and stuff from whoever I perceived on the dating site. You know, uh, I just had this sort of sinking thing inside that I was just like, man, I don't know how this is gonna come to me. I know I said it's done, but there's nobody good out there. You know, there's no one good out there. And I just caught myself and said, what? There has to be at least one good person out there because I said my ultimate romantic fulfillment is done. Um, there has to be at least one because when it's done, it's done. And how that person's gonna come to me, I don't know, but in fact, there are probably a lot of really great people out there and there's no reason for me to think this anymore. This is a remnant from an old time and old experiences that I was experiencing through a different lens, a different mentality, and there are a ton of great people out there. Um, and Matt and I had our first conversation where it sort of dipped into the I'm interested in you um, arena the next day the next day like I don't know not even 24 hours later so I don't know um I just wanted to put that out there because this there's so much perception of conflict like of conflicting ideas between all the different authors all the different schools of thought they're all talking about the same thing and it's really helpful to start looking at all the things that seem 
to contradict each other and figure out how they're trying to say the same thing. That's what I've been doing all year is realizing how, you know, Marianne Williamson, Deepak Chopra, Wallace Waddles, Neville Goddard, um, all of these guys are talking about the exact same thing using different language, using different illustrations, um, you know, and seemingly saying conflictual things like incompatible, mutually exclusive things. I don't think they are. Uh, I think language is very limiting. And so, you know, um, I just wanted to add this out there into the world that I don't think that there's any conflict between sort of the all-encompassing ability to manifest whatever you want and the self-love, self-concept, um, you know, idea or whatever. I don't know. I hope that made sense and have a great day.